I think you say, like, what are you really going to trust? Are you going to trust uh, uh, some sort of black box algorithm from some other site, or are you going to trust the thing that you can actually see and understand? But you, do you accept that there are lots of engineers that are, are looking at, at the way that Twitter is built and, and the, the lack of engineers, because so many have, have left, and are worried about the health of Twitter? Well, I mean, there have been um, many of these people have predicted that Twitter will cease to function. Their predictions have not turned out to be true. You know, um, insert Mark Twain you know, saying, you know, rumors about death are greatly exaggerated. Um, let's go back six months. I mean, we're literally on Twitter right now. Right. So it must work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back six months and even further further back than that. When you put that initial bid in, you then had a wobble. You kind of said, I actually don't want to buy Twitter anymore. Um, oh, oh, no, I, mean, it, I mean, it really is quite entertaining. I mean, it's like soap opera. Uh, because uh, when I first made the offer, uh, the response was the, the uh, board adopted a poison pill. So they were like, hell no, you can't buy Twitter. We'd rather die. We'd like chew on cyanide before being, being bought. That was their initial response. And then, <laughs> and then you said, and then you said, actually, I don't want to buy it. <laughs> yes, so and, and, then, and, and, and then they said, no, you must buy us. Gun to the head. You have to buy us. I'm like, are you the same people who said you'd rather die than, than be bored? Doesn't that seem odd? So I guess, my, <laughs> I guess my question to you is, in terms of, you said that, you said that the reason was because of bots, because Twitter was filled with bots. Well, now, looking back yeah. at it now, was there a little bit of you that thought, actually, maybe I've overpaid. Actually, maybe I don't want to do this. I want, I want to get out of this. Be honest. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the problem was that the um, uh, publicly stated user numbers were in excess of the real user numbers. Uh, so, um, I've, I've heard you talk about that. Yes, yes. Yes. Basically, looking back at it now. Was that the only reason that you wanted to pull out? Yes. That was literally the issue. It's like, it's like let's say you um, uh, buy a warehouse full of goods, um, and you're told that uh, less than 5% of the goods in the warehouse are, uh, have, have, are, are broken. You know? um, but then you actually get the warehouse. You look into the warehouse, and it turns out actually 25% of the things are broken. You'd be like, huh, that's, uh, that's not what you said. <laughs> so then you changed your mind again and decided to buy it. Did well, you do that? Did you do that? I kind of had to. You, right. Did you do that because you thought that a court would make you do that? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the reason. Right. So you were still trying to get out of it, and then you just were advised by lawyers, look, I ha you're going to have to, we're gonna, we're, to buy this. Yes. Interesting. So you. <laughs> so yeah. So you. So you didn't. You didn't actually want to purchase it, even when you said you were going. You, well, not at that you, price. You were going to, really. No, I mean, like, like, let's say, like, I think the analogy is pretty, pretty close. Like, let's say, you know, it's, it's like you, the, there's a warehouse full of goods. Uh, they say the warehouse, uh, less than five percent of what's in the warehouse is broken. And then you look at, you, you walk into the warehouse, you say, actually, it's twenty-five percent. So you, you know, you might still want to buy what's the in that warehouse, but probably at a lower price. Not buying the stuff that's broken. So you, that you didn't have an epiphany. You just thought, I'm going to, I'm going to have to buy this. I might as well buy the bullet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then you walk. It's not in. super complicated. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure you've said that before. Oh, uh, fair enough. Um, so then you you came into Twitter. Cue, cue, cue a whole bunch of court cases. <laughs> <laughs> you said this in the BBC interview, blah blah, etc. So you, you then came into Twitter with, with a sync. What were your first impressions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, wow, this is a really nice office building. Uh, and uh, Expensive. Yes, a very expensive office building. Um, great decor. It's a lovely place. Um, and... Um, I mean, and, and definitely is, is spending money like it's going out of fashion, uh, which isn't, it isn't quite going out of fashion yet. Um, so, no, I mean, I, I, the gravity of the situation is perhaps uh, not well understood. Of, of um, 
at, you know, at the point at which uh, the company, the, the tra transaction closed, uh, Twitter was tracking to uh, lose uh, over $3 billion a year. Um, so, uh, and had $1 billion in the bank. So that's four months to death. So this is your starting position. Uh, how would you feel? Pretty, pretty intense, you know? You also had to borrow quite a lot of money and pay interest on that too. Well, that's why part of why it was a $3 billion uh, run rate. So um, in, in rough numbers, a normal year, Twitter would do, say, let's say, $4.5 billion in revenue, $4.5 billion in, in cost. Um, I mean, it was really kind of like a non-profit. <laughs> They'd run it at roughly, roughly break even. Now, but that's, was, not a bank, that's not bankruptcy. You're not saving that no. company from bankruptcy. No, it's breaking even. But, but then, then the issue is that um, if you then add a billion and a half dollars in debt servicing um, and have a massive drop in revenue, which we did, um, which was partly cyclic and partly, you know, political concerns and whatever. Um, so revenue, you know, call it dropped by over a third. It's not, and, and this is not just Twitter. Uh, you know, Facebook and Google have also seen some significant uh, advertising revenue declines. It was, it was a little, it's been a little higher at Twitter, but uh, most of the advertisers are coming back. So I think we'll just, we'll be back where there's a cyclic demand, uh, drop, which is still pretty significant. Um, but but in, in rough numbers, uh, revenue dropped from four and a half billion to three. Um, uh, and um, expenses went from four and a half to six, creating a $3 billion negative cash flow situation um, and Twitter having a billion dollars in the bank. That's four months to live. So unless drastic action was taken immediately, this company's going to die. And well, let's, let, let's talk about that drastic action because almost immediately um, you sacked a lot of Twitter workers. Um, yeah. And, and, and I, I spoke to them. It was very easy to speak to them uh, when it happened. And, and, and the way they said, mm -hmm. pretty much everyone said, is, is that it felt quite haphazard. It was. And it felt a little bit uncaring. Do you, do you, do you, uh, I wouldn't say uncaring. The, 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 you know, the issue is like uh, the, the company is either going to go bankrupt uh, or if, if we do not cut costs immediately. Um, this is not a, a caring, uncaring situation. It's like if all ship sinks, then nobody's going to drop. Right. Yeah. But, but a lot of people just lost their jobs like that. Um, and, and, and they weren't, what, they didn't what, even know they were, they, they'd lost their jobs often. They just, okay. were just, they were just so frozen let me out ask of you, their accounts. What would you do? Well, you might want to give someone some notice. I mean, you might, it's, by the way, I, I'm not running Twitter, but, I know, but this, is, this is the criticism and this is but, what actual, this is what I staff members but, say. A but, little bit of notice, uh, you know. No, I understand. If you have four months to live, 120 days, in 120 days you're dead. So how, so what do you want to do? How much are you worth? I don't know. But you, I mean, we're talking about around the $200 billion mark. I mean, it's not no. quite, you're framing it in, in a way that, that you know, that it had a, had a few months to live. You're quite a rich man. Um, I sold a, a lot of Tesla stock to close this deal. I did not want to sell a Tesla stock. Okay. Um, do, you, do you have any regrets on the way that some of the staff were let go? Uh, I mean, people were given, you know, three months of severance, some cases more. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're, like I said, the companies need to be run on their own cognizance. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not so easy for me to sell stock, as people might think. I have to sell stock during certain periods. I can't sell stock during other periods. Um, so there's only, there are only brief windows where I can sell Tesla stock. And then this is often taken as some lack of faith in Tesla. And in fact, it, the, the, the Tesla stock sales caused the Tesla stock to plummet, uh, which is not good. Do you think those two were connected? Well, the, the, the people couldn't, couldn't parse the difference between I'm selling Tesla stock because I have, I've lost faith in Tesla, which I haven't, or that it's desperately needed for Twitter.